Hey guys, heavy on 45 here. Now, about, I want to say about Black History Month or so in February, I had made a comment about Tyler Perry. And I said I'll get back to it. And it's not that I have a problem with Tyler Perry per se, but I'm, I'm finding some of the work that he did in his early times more interesting than some of his later work. Um, like, a, I used to love his uh, plays. I'll quote still uh, his Diary of, Mad Black, Diary of Mad Black Woman play. I quote uh, Medea's Class Reunion, Medea's Family Reunion. These are things I remember. You know, those were like my introduction to him. I would basically I showed that to when I went to college my white friends and they enjoyed it you know it was a time of us being you know it was a bridge connector for us in a way it was something that I could show them and they didn't have a problem with it and I didn't have a problem showing them to them um and I'm not saying that to say that anything that Tyler's has done is racist or too racist for me to show to anybody but it was just in my mind i guess it seemed like he put a little bit more work into some of those and i'm not gonna say it's a lot of work but it was more comedical comical not comedical because i don't think that's a word uh it was more comical and a lot of stuff that he did um and it was a great use of Medea, and I feel like a lot of the stuff he does now is wash, rinse, repeat, and he does some, in my mind, taboos of being a writer. And people say that he writes all this stuff, and I think it shows that he's, if he is writing all this stuff, he's somewhat fatigued. Um, because, like, I watch, like I said, the plays. I remember watching the movies. The movies didn't go far from the plays, but, you know, there were distinct things. Like, if you watch the play Dire and Mad Black Woman, um, she stays with her husband in the end. If you watch the movie of Dire and Mad Black Woman, she gets with Orlando, the guy that she's been talking to while she's been, quote, unquote, caring for her husband. Um, you know, I remember watching Medea's Family Reunion, um, the play, a lot more pieces being come around and you're being introduced to Mr. Brown. Like you have the, uh, Cora's daughter who is apparently, uh, on crack and Cora is constantly being told by Medea, your daughter's on crack, your daughter's on crack, your daughter's on crack. You know, I remember that. Um. I remember G from Silk was in that. I remember that his whole thing was that he was in love with a girl that he liked back in high school and he's a mechanic and she comes back for the reunion, finds out that we find out that she's in an abusive relationship. We find out about the um, niece who's living at the house who is, um, what is she? She's in a relationship. Well, she has a baby with this guy, and they're both, I won't say, staying with Medea at the time. Um, and they're worried about him going back to the drug life. Uh, I remember the story of um, the aunt who makes a lot of money. She thinks that nobody wants her, nobody wants her because they can't control it. They got a big, strong, a strong woman that has all this money on. They don't need to. And, um, yeah, those are, I remember all those stories being in there. When you get to the movie, you know, we take a lot of those stories out. We do have the abused, um, we have the abused daughter that, I don't want to say it was, no, it wasn't Cora's daughter. Well, uh, Tamla Mann's daughter in this one. It was like um, Cicely Tyson's daughter. No, not Cicely Tyson's daughter. It Cicely Tyson was in Dire Mad Black Woman. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, she had 
in Dar uh not Dar in Medea family her mom was just crazy about wealth and so her mom in the movie was more on the side of the guy who had the money over her trying to find happiness and you have the relationship growing of the bus driver and her sister who has kids and them trying to build a relationship now you see i remember those i remember details of them now i've watched some recent tyler period things and it, i'm not gonna say they're not thought out but the continuity of it is kind of weird like I, I watched for a long time the have and the have nots and at first i was following it but and i think this is a problem that you have in a lot of shows too you're trying to skip through stuff and things not making sense and sometimes like time is kind of weird um when i first started watching you know uh you have uh hannah having problems with her daughter kansas uh candy or candace and candace is messing with jim crier and katrin crier her knows all about it and you know you have i won't say basic but i feel like what he tried to do was one up it to where stuff got ridiculous because and it got ridiculous kind of quick like i've never heard of a person basically like okay benny at one point is getting to a car accident thanks to wyatt crier wyatt crier then is putting is like trying to hide that he hit benny and a little five-year-old girl um when that happens benny's in a coma now while benny's in a coma his dad comes back his dad's real sick his dad needs um needs a I want to say his liver or something like that. And so knowing that he would need that, he knew that his son would have to die from gift. So he was trying to get medical leave for him to be able to get his son's heart or well, get his son's liver or whatever so that he could live. Um, his daughter, Candace intervenes, goes to court to go against him because of course she's going through law school at the time, but she hasn't really gotten her law degree yet. Um, talks, talk. They talk to a uh, judge, and all of a sudden, and amidst all the stuff going on after they save him, come and find out that, um, well, he wakes up, and so he's saved. And how long all this take? A week. We are still waiting for people like R. Kelly's trial. We are in day 10 of Derek Chauvin's trial. And Derek Chauvin killed George Floyd almost a year ago. I mean, like, it, I understand the idea of a speedy trial. But, I mean, like, that was a speedy trial. I mean, he went to a coma a week ago and we're already having a trial over if we should let him die. But he doesn't have a uh, do not resuscitate order. He they're just trying to go through courts for stuff like this. But people have been in comas for years and they haven't had to do something like that. He was only out for a week. You know that that kind of threw me off. Um, the idea of like I have family members that watch his show, The Oval. <sighs> doesn't make sense and. I said if earlier that I feel like Tyler doesn't go through the um, steps of w doing stuff that I say he did something that's taboo. And what I mean is taboo is I want to be, I've told y'all I wanted to be a screenwriter. Well, for me to be a screenwriter, I have to go through and I have to, and I actually got a book on how to do it. And it said that I needed to investigate what I'm talking about doing. Because, like, let's say I'm talking about trying to, like, I have a doctor's movie that I'm trying to do. And I say this person did this and all this stuff. Well, I don't know all, if I don't know 
the medical lingo when I'm having these people talk, it's not going to make any sense. You know, I'm going to have people like a lot of critics that's on here that basically examine what's going on. I seen one that like really tried to scrutinize like the good doctor and stuff like that. And I'll have somebody like that come on to looking at my movie or TV show and say, hey, something doesn't seem right about that. And some people can get away with, but some of the writing also seems somewhat off. Like, I, I'd feel like if Tyler's not burnt out, he, he's just trying to, instead of going for quality, he's going for quantity. I think in his earlier times, he focused more on the quality of his work. He was more about being, I want to, I want to say he was tr focused more on being a Christian artist more than he was to produce stuff for production sake. Um, wh I watched Medea's farewell um, play and it was okay. It you know, it went to some that he started doing later on in his place where, like, in the first few, you had, like, a moral idea that was coming through of what people should do. There was a resolution to it. At the end of Medea's final, uh, final call or whatever it was, there was no, like, conclusion that made everything okay, like... They tried to wrap it up, but the end kind of did like what he normally did in the middle of the thing where they talk about old school music and you have all the different people start doing old school songs. And when they get into doing the old school song, they eventually snap back usually and, you know, they resolve all their situations. If the husband and wife were fighting at some point, they don't go into a room and talk about this and talk about how much they love each other and they'll get that fixed. If the daughter had a mom who was on drugs and the mom comes back saying she cleaned and the mom daughter didn't really want to talk to her, they'll go into a room, talk about it, and, you know, everything will be good. You know, there was a settling of things when Tyler used to do stuff. And I don't feel like there's resolve to it. And I'm not saying that he's a bad I'm just saying that I feel like he's, it's kind of like when we talk about max production in food. When we talk about mass production of food, we say that we're sacrificing taste for quantity. So when you go for, like, let's say a McDonald's burger, um, and you want to get like 50 McDoubles, you're getting those many McDoubles not for a group of people or let's say something like that. So you're getting quantity more than quality. If you want the quality, some people say you go to, um, let's say, Outback Steakhouse or um, you'll make it at home because, you know, you know how you want a thick, juicy patty instead of the little meat you get at McDonald's or Wendy's. But the reason you have that is because the cost effectiveness of creating a sandwich that is small, quick to eat, and, you know, it's not... It's not bad, but it's not the best burger in town that you'll find. I'll put it that way. So it's basic. It's a basic thing with their own little quirks. Like if you said you wanted a Big Mac, it's a basic sandwich, but, you know, it's the secret sauce that they put onto it, the onions, the uh, lettuce, the tomato. Do they put lettuce? No. It's the cheese, and you know, that is what you're asking for. So you're mass producing this, and so the quality of or how good it could be goes down somewhat. On the other side, like with Tyler Perry, I think for he's got too many things out at one time because I think like 
He has the Oval, Sisters, uh, I think Brothers, The Pangs. Um, what else is he juggling? Every once in a while he has a movie come out. Then you have people trying to get him into their movies. Um, because you remember he did the movie Alex Cross at one point. While at the same time he was doing, I want to say three TV shows. Because he had the Have and the, Oh yeah, the Have and Have Nots is still on now. So you had the Have and the Have Nots. At the time when he did Alex Cross, I think the Have and Have Nots was still going on. Uh, if Loving You Is Wrong. Uh, for Better or Worse. Uh, the... Love Thy Neighbor, um, and I think the, that's all of them, right? and probably House of Pain. So, you know, he was juggling a couple things, but, you know, being a father, uh, writer, and stuff like that, I feel like maybe he's burnt out. And I know some people probably like he wasn't good in the first place. I, I would disagree with that, and I'm not saying that he's bad now. I'm just saying that He's mass producing things without doing research behind it. Because there's some things I'm like, well, even I know that wouldn't work. And I'm like, I'm not a big time, I'm not a lawyer, but, and it's not like I've seen a lot of lawyers on TV <laughs> until I started watching Derek Chauvin's case. Uh, you know, I, I've i never been in a courtroom myself, so I'm not like, well, he he doesn't understand, but it's kind of like the idea, and he, it's the idea that he came up with. It was the idea of Mr. Deeds. Um, no, it wasn't Mr. Deeds, good deeds. And the girl asked him in the movie, Do you even know how much a gallon of milk is? And the thing was, he had to get someone to tell him how much a gallon of milk was because he doesn't go get his own milk. And the fact of the matter is, if you ask me how much a gallon of milk is, uh, I'll give you a rough, like $3 for it, like three twenty-five or something like that. Maybe a little bit more. I do whole milk. Um, and that probably still not right. You know, um, but that's the point. Like, he had to get his assistant to reach research for him. I don't know if he has a person who researches the things that he's talking about doing, or he just does it, and from him doing it, he then has that person, um, he has this whole thing, uh, produced that way. I don't know. Um, but... And I think that's the thing with a lot of creators. One, like I said, is one where you're trying to one up what you did before because you. A lot of times, when I feel like when you're doing a TV show, you're trying to put so much into that first season because you want to keep people, people's attention. You're trying to keep everybody uh, going, and so you plan for the first season, but you know. You don't know if you're going to make it past that first season. So you don't plan for anything past that first season. You try and go ahead and have that first season taken care of. And after that, when they like, yeah, you're renewed for a second season. You're like, oh, crap. So now you have to try and do some more. And so now you're trying to one-up what you did the time before. And like I said before, you continue having to one-up yourself. You don't reach a level of ridiculousness that will uh, disconnect people from the world you created. Like, when it came to um, If Loving You Was Wrong, the idea of, because as I remember it, the whole story was based around that this white girl, this white woman was sleeping with her neighbor who was a black man. And she was pregnant. And she was fairly sure that it was his baby. So we going through all this stuff. We find out that the baby is black. And trying to one-up themselves. And this is a Tyler Perry show. 
it comes out that the baby is not the black man's baby. And not only is it the black, not the black man's baby, you come find out that this woman has been a hoe. I mean, like, full out, I've been slanging this thing to everybody that'll come by a hoe. And I'm like, okay, you know, it. it's not that far to say, I will say, that somebody was unfaithful. But I guess the idea of the character model that he built in the first few stories, I mean, the first few episodes, make it seem like she was a good, somewhat faithful wife, always at home, like loved her husband, had a guy next door that, you know, she had opportunities to mess with, so she did. Um, and it kind of like completely changed the character to where it created in my mind disconnect in who they were and there are some other ones like that but and i like i said i contribute that somewhat to burnout and also trying to one-up yourself from what you did last time um and i'm not saying that when you're making a show, you have to have your standards low. I'm just saying that you have to have somewhat of a plan, um, something to keep yourself going on. And also, and this is probably just my pet peeve, because I've seen this on a lot of stuff. The idea of time is ridiculous. And most of it goes back to the idea of like, because... I've seen Tyler in his shows have a odd sense of time. Like time moves, but like there's things that are still not resolved. Like I continue with this one story, but you know, the rest of them are still there, but time just like, okay. I, I've talked to other people about this. If I went with the have and the have nots, all this stuff happened in the have and have nots within probably about seven months. You've had a car accident. After car accident, you have a person go into a coma. The person who hit him go into prison, get out of prison after being raped. After he got raped, um, the girl who was Miss Candy then... Uh, steals money from the judge crier judge crier then takes the money back from her which then she takes the money back from him um there's another murder and i'm like okay the flow of time is weird here um and like i said if i was trying to like keep up with the time the time is so off on it and it's not just Tyler does it. There's other people do. And it's for the sake of trying to keep things dramatic. Because like I like watching The Blacklist. Um, but I also have to say The Blacklist has a problem with time. Like about three seasons ago, we had a person have a baby. Now that baby is five years old. Now, the baby hasn't gone nowhere. I mean, like the baby is supposedly like this stuff happens day after day or week after week and we're finding out new revelations of what's happening in their lives but this baby went from literally a baby to she's in kindergarten i'm like okay the flow of time is weird here and there's no there's nothing saying that it was three years later or anything like that it just time just moved forward i don't know you know there's not a explanation for it and maybe that's just like maybe they won't know this type thing but i i guess you could say i wouldn't be complaining about this if i wasn't a true fan of these shows um even when you go to like actually no i about say supernatural kept their stuff um pretty much uh equal timeline it always was about a year in, for each season and out of that year they continued to after the sixth season it was a lot of wash rinse repeat like dean would try and save sam 
And by doing that, uh, Dean dooms the world, which then Sam gets upset with Dean. Dean then proceeds to, they reconcile. And now Sam makes a choice to save the world and Dean has to save him. And, and then uh, they're upset with each other again, talking about how they're not brothers. Then they reconcile again. And that happened until they, I want to say for at least five seasons, because they ended off in season 13, I want to say. So from season seven to like, um, I'll say 11, it was a lot of wash, rinse, repeat of you messed up. I can't believe you're my brother. Let's do this. And let's split up. Let's come back together. And I'm still going to sacrifice my life to protect you. Um, we, we as, and I'm going to include myself, we as writers have to be, I won't say consistent. And yeah, one up yourself is difficult, but I'm, you know, it it's kind of like trying to do like Pokemon. Like, I remember there was a joke one time while watching Newgrounds where they were like, okay, we fought every element in uh, Masters of God, uh, Good and Evil and all stuff. And they're like, okay, who was it next for us to fight? And this girl's like, next, we fight God. And they're like, we already did that. And she's like, fuck. And that's what it feels like you, when you, and that's literally what happened in Supernatural. Uh, like, when you fight everything that you can, what do you do next? You call it a day. There, there, there's nothing else for you to do. Like, there'll be... I went off on tangent. Okay. Tyler Perry... I will not say is a terrible writer, like I said, but he does, he's producing more in quantity than he is in quality. Um, if he had just one thing that he was doing, he probably would make more, more. but also maybe I could be wrong because a lot of the shows that he has, like my mom watches them and stuff like that. So there must be something about his stuff. And it could be just because it has the name Tyler Perry on it. People are dedicated Tyler Perry lovers. So they're not going to belittle anything that Tyler has done. And if that's the case, cool. You know, I'm not trying to do it. But in my opinion, and if you agree or disagree, you know, write a comment on this he uh the quality of what he's done has uh dwindled by trying to be sophisticated dwindled in uh the way it's produced so if you agree okay if you don't okay i would like to see a comment if you got one uh, preferably on here and just, like I I have some people who know who I actually am and they'll tell me stuff um but write a comment on here so maybe they'll get other people to talk about it too um and I'll catch you later